Cash the Ticket Championship Week. We got conference tournament championships. And I'm the news anchor from The Simpsons. I get to shuffle what? my papers this on the, is, on the console. Evan Jenkins production. We have one, two, three million sheets of paper. Yes. Every conference tournament championship that you would care about and a bunch that you yes. don't care about. And here is your obligatory old man yelling at clouds moment. I miss the Big East tournament. What do you mean you? Oh. The way it yeah. used to be was Kemba, double step back, <laughs> dagger, cardiac Kemba, MSG, teams that made sense, and it was the best tournament ever. Uh, but thank you to pig executives and their greed for ruining the sport. Jim, how are you? I'm great. Great to be next <laughs> to you. What a great intro. I do love championship week. I'm not trying to serve a poo-poo platter. We're going to go through these, and if you find one that you don't like or we don't need to spend time on, crumple it up and throw it away, and we'll move on. Yeah, I think, look, here's, let, let's start out with a way to do this. So, people, I, I, I will continue to say this. You have to treat this like there's a great reward roughly 10 days from now, okay? And that reward is March Madness. Mm -hmm. So what I don't think you should do is go insane in the weeks leading up to March Madness. Yeah, don't make 20 bets on these conference tournaments. Uh, because here's the thing. We talk about value. Mm -hmm. When you get to the NCAA tournament, you can chart out a course with the seating. Mm -hmm. And the teams we're really talking about with future wagers on one level or another are accomplished. Now... I can find value in the NCAA tournament by betting the 13th rated team in America and get plus 3,000. Right. I think that's Kentucky. You're not getting that in these conference tournaments because what you're forced to do if you really want value is to bet horseshit for lack of a technical term. Right, the, the nine seed. And I, I have a hard time, like specifically in a conference like the Big Ten. I think the Big Ten is ass. What value am I getting? And who am I selecting to beat Purdue exactly? Who? Yeah. So I, I would just say it's not me passing the buck. It's that the lion is out of the cage in roughly 10 days. And, <coughs> excuse me, I will dabble. But I'm going to be very, very careful. Because frankly, there's just better things to bet on. I think championship week is a better watch than a better bet. I would agree with that. Is that fair? Because there is, everybody's alive. Anybody can make the tournament. Yes. Everybody's fighting for their season. Yes. Let's start out. Let's go to the SEC. Now, this is a bit of an issue. Jim and I had to hunt and peck for uh. odds. Your top four seeds that are receiving the double buy, mm -hmm. Tennessee's your one seed. Ready? You don't like them. Auburn's your four. Kentucky's your three, Bama's your two. Ready? The other way around. Kentucky's the two, Bama's My the bad. I don't trust Bama or Tennessee, which means right off the rip, I think you have a chance for value in the SEC. Yep. Now, my problem is, last time we talked, I told you, I'm a, I'm a slap dick for Kentucky. What'd they do this weekend? Beat Tennessee in Tennessee. Eye-opening. Uh, it's just, it's who they can be. It's not who they are. It's who they can be. Jim, there's no team in America with a higher upside than Kentucky. Five guys who can shoot it 40% or more from deep. They got the big man presence. You got elite guard play. Reed Shepard, to me, should be a top five pick in the NBA draft, period. Mm -hmm. I really like Kentucky. Now, this is where you're going to disappoint me. What are their odds in the SEC tournament? It's not bad. Plus 400. I can do that. Yes, yeah, that's that's workable. I it's can not do like that. a like Tennessee's plus one thirty. Yeah, we are not going to pick very many, if any, one seeds at no. plus one. And that's not getting no, it done. And, and, and look, you're getting the benefit of you have the buy. They'll play the winner of the of Ole Miss, A and M. Now A and M's got elite guard play, and Kentucky and A and M had a war down in College Station. But this is neutral floor. I think you'll get a heavy Kentucky contingent here in Nashville. Uh, by the way, why are we not doing this in Atlanta anymore? Mm -hmm. I digress. Uh, I like Kentucky's matchup there, and then they will play 
Bama, Florida, Georgia, Mizzou. I, I, is there a chance Florida could beat Bama? I was, yes. F- Florida's a little frisky. Of, of the teams that aren't, you know, the favorites, Yeah, Florida just beat Bama recently. Yeah. And I feel like they're a team that can score. And when we talk yeah. about teams that can heat up, doesn't mean they're going to go on sustained runs starting. Yeah, I would, do, I would do a unit on Kentucky, and it's me being consistent to what I believe. And look, Kentucky showed you what they can be. Now, they're also the same team that's capable of giving up a 90-burger and losing to someone off-brand. But I, I in the SEC, for me, I'm going to take Kentucky. I don't trust Tennessee and Rick Barnes. Auburn, they're good, but certainly not great. And Bama, forget it. If there's any team worse defensively than Kentucky, it's Alabama. Give me Kentucky, Bama in a race to 100. I'll take Kentucky. Okay, Kentucky's plus 400. We like that. Circle that as a potential I do. play. I do. Florida plus 2,000 if you wanted a bomb pop. Yeah, and I and They I got think, a top 25 offense. So let's do that for the conference tournaments. We're okay. going to go with plays, and then if you just want a wild like bomb Like the horse pops. racer in you, the swing. Yes. You want to take a swing? There you go. Yeah. There's uh, There's Florida. Now, are you being serious, or is this me being on okay. an episode of Punk? This next one, I'm going to just do it for The Penn Fed Credit Union Patriot League. No. The thing's already underway. The, the, in the, the final. title game is on Wednesday. It's Colgate, and, way, and we're not doing If your that. conference tournament can't get a legitimate arena to play in, and you're playing on Colgate's home floor we're done. in Hamilton, New York. We're done. Hey, Fugazi. Yep, rip that I'm up. out on the Patriot League. Next. All right, next up is the Pac-12, and I'm going to have to do some digging on this because odds aren't at the click of a finger, but you tell me who you like. This has not been a conference we've bet a lot this season. No, it's been a lot of decent, very little good. I don't have a great read on most of these teams. I mean, I like. Look, Arizona, though, again, they showed their ass the other day. Um Arizona's clearly the best team, but I don't think that they domineer over anyone because of the up-and-down nature of who they are, and they play so fast. They can get themselves in some trouble. For me, you know, what, Kyle Williams out of Colorado, you think he can carry him? Wazoo's a mystery team. They're never on television. Oregon I have no faith in whatsoever. And then you're with Arizona. So if there's an opportunity from the lower seeds. You want me to give you some odds? Yeah, let me hear it. This is dicey. Arizona heavy favorite minus 160. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, they're prohibitive favorites. That's like a joke. You can't bet that. But it also tells you what they think of everybody else. Colorado plus 500. Washington State plus 500. Then another drop off. Oregon plus 1,000. Utah, 1,500. Washington, 3,000, and then 4,000 plus for everybody else. All right. If we look at Utah and the pathway, you're getting a double dip of Colorado and Wazoo. Colorado away from home, don't care about. Mm -hmm. Wazoo's the mystery, but yeah, I mean, could I see Utah grinding their way and getting into the final four of it? Yes. Do I think they could win and get to a a game against Arizona? Sure. But do I really think they're going to win? No. No. Stanford, if they're on, I mean, they just bomb. They got that French seven-footer. Oh, Renan or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they are are government cheese Kentucky. Stanford grips it and rips it. They're just no damn good. But if they're on and you're on over the course of a few games, would it shock me if Stanford banged 43 pointers over the course of a tournament? No. UCLA, forget it. Oregon State, can we get rid of Wayne Tinkle already, please? Jim, honestly, if Mike, you, can I give you a long shot? Yeah, let me hear. USC. Oh, with Bronny? No, not with Bronny. With Collier, like the good players I on know, the team. Come on, what they've they won four of the last five, and I'm not including a win against Arizona, by the way. And you just got to be hot right now. I mean, we're talking plus four thousand if you want to bet them. I mean, we're, everybody's prohibitive underdogs to Arizona, but USC kind of interests me a little bit, right? They got still got Boogie Ellis. I know it's been a disappointing year, but they were a tournament team a year ago. They've underachieved. Maybe this is this is a spot to flip the switch. You, you can can't make it. a compelling argument for anybody in the Pac-12. I'm trying. No, I mean, I gave you Utah based on the draw. You think USC's putting it together at the right time? I'm not mad about it. I, people, I don't like this conference, and I freely admit to you, I am probably betting against any Pac-12 teams to get in the tournament. I know. I'm sorry. Buzzkill. Missed shot by me. Mm-hmm. All right, let's keep it rolling because now we get to a tournament I really do like. I love what they've done in moving it to Las Vegas. Uh, the Mountain West. I can't wait. 
I, I one year I want to go to this. The problem is I'm always working the next week in Vegas for the show. It's like, how much fun would it be to just go watch ball? Not the craziness of March Madness. You just go, you watch the Mountain West, some good dinners. Yep. I would love to do it. Uh, your one seed is Utah State. Jim and I are not fans. Great Asabor. Um, do you know who the betting favorite is? It's not Utah State. Not the one seed. It's San Diego State. Vandal's got them plus 230. As the five seed, I don't buy UNLV. Mm -hmm. I don't buy Nevada. I don't buy Boise. My boys from New Mexico have really fallen off. What are they to win this deal? Boise plus 600. No, no, no. New Mexico. Oh, New Mexico plus 700. They got, they got the, all that bloodline, the NBA they, bloodline. They have the talent. Mashburn to do and it. House. And, and right. And then they got Toppin. Dimitri Dent. They got Obi Toppin's little bro. They got uh what I never can remember his name. What is it? Junior Johnson Colson or whatever, the block party kid. Look, I, they have the talent. The issue with New Mexico is you take them out of the pit and you put them on a neutral floor. Can they make their way through Boise and presumably Nevada to face off against? So they got to play extra games. Yeah, and they did it to themselves. I, look, what's New Mexico's uh, odds against plus 1,000? Plus 700. Uh, it's not great. It's not great. You wish it was longer for a team that has to go the whole tournament. Yeah, and look, this is a conference. Like Wednesday bought, through Saturday. It's a conference I bought into last year, and they had a dreadful tournament. I remember. What do you want to do with this? We don't love Utah State. And Brian Dutcher and his Aztecs. What do you want to do? I was going to say, the problem is they're... This is where the books get you. You go, well, I'm going to take the five-seed Aztecs and get one on the books. No, nope, they've made them the betting favorites. You don't ever get one on the books. I can't. That's the team I'd play, but what am I supposed to, plus 230? Yeah, I, I got to. I just, when I look at talent, man, New Mexico has the talent to do this. So they make them, I know they're not a true long shot. But make plus them, 700, yeah. and again, I don't fear Nevada or Boise. It's just I don't like the way New Mexico has been playing. But, yeah, I, I would stick with it at plus 700 for me. All right. That's the most interesting one. Dabbling. The next one. Absolutely not. This the is, MEAC. I'm not, I'm not doing this. No? You're not going to break down Norfolk State? No, definitely not. That's a battle Sorry, for who's going to be a 16 Evan, seed. Didn't need to print that, that one. That brings us to. Oh, I can't wait. You need to talk me through it. I know you got people involved in the conference. I know you're an alum of the conference. What do we do with the MAC tournament where your CMU chips are the four seed, you take it on Bowling Green, for the right to play what I imagine is the overwhelming favorite in Toledo? I will pull up the odds, but they should not be an overwhelming favorite. What, Akron? Yeah, Akron to me. Okay. Akron to me is the team I'm most interested in. My chips, uh, this is a chance to talk about them since we burned the program to the ground. They pick themselves up. They play defense. Here's they the problem. Score. They can't, and they don't make free throws. So they're the worst type of team to bet because you're guaranteed to be in a torture chamber can't for it. 40 minutes, sweating it out, banking on free throws at the end of the game. I wouldn't bet my chips. I'll root my ass off for them. I mean, they're the four seed. They've, they've, what are the odds on the favorites here? I got to pull them up. Let me see it because, look, Toledo and Akron, it just feels like every year they're the favorite. It feels like nobody else has a basketball program. I, Ohio, a few years ago... Who's that kid they had? The guard. Cooper? Jason, uh, no, Ohio. And he had, uh, he, he ended up going to the pros. He was a really nice guard. And they pulled an opposite. What is it? Jason, um, God, my mind. Oh, you're killing me. I'm sorry. I'll figure it out. You give me the odds on the Mac, and I'm going to figure out on that, on the kid from O. I just, I loved watching him play. All right, here's what I'm staring at. And I believe, yeah, these look accurate. All right. Akron, plus 155, your betting favorite. Okay. Followed by Toledo and Ohio, essentially plus 330 for the two of them. Kent State, plus 600. And then you've got a big tier drop-off. Then it's Bowling Green, Miami of Ohio, CMU, plus 1,400, 1,600, and 2,200. I wouldn't touch any of them. It's the big four. It's Akron, Ohio, Toledo, Kent State. It's going to be one of those four. And it's just a matter of how comfortable. Like I told you, I think Akron's the best team. And it's Jason. So Toledo, Toledo never wins this thing. No matter how good they are in the regular season, they never win this Here thing. Here he is. Jason Preston. Oh, okay. I wasn't out of my mind. He sunk. Who did they beat? He sunk somebody in the tournament. It feels so long ago. It's a disgrace. Uh, he's actually still in uh, pro ball. How about that? Carry on. Uh, if you want to play... That's not the favorite, which is Akron. I think I would go Ohio. 
Because yeah. I'm not going Toledo. I uh, I wouldn't touch this conference with a temple. All right. I can't lie to you. I just don't like your conference. I'm you can't get mad you. at me. I'm not telling you it's a good conference. I'm Plus, just it's hope, not I'm a just conference. hoping that this year is different. My chips get to the tournament for the, the tourney for the first time since Chris Kamen. Right. Please, please, please. The Mac. Oh, see, this is a conference we have bet a few times this season. Oh, my Siena Saints, the 11 seed at four and 23. Um, look, here's here's just some fast facts. Uh, the three seed Maris, they've never made a tournament. Fairfield. To me, there's a big gap between them and your one seed Quinnipiac. That's just my personal opinion. I loosely follow some of this crap just because these are the schools some of my friends went to out of high school. Iona's trash, Manhattan's trash, St. The Peter's. Jaspers? We're not going to bet the Jaspers? No, we're not. What's Quinnipiac to win this deal? Uh, they are plus 350. Only team with better odds, Fairfield at plus 300. Yeah, see, I, I just, I don't. What about St. Peter's? Little Magic plus you 390. You can have it. Listen, just for the record, Manhattan is plus 25,000, the longest shot to win it. Yeah, what's Siena? Same thing. They should burn your money. Here's what you could do. If you believe <laughs> the one or the two seed is going to win this tournament, you could bet them both and still walk away up. You're right. I, I think there's a gap personally. Especially in some of these mid-major conferences. Yeah, like if The one-bid leagues where there really only are a couple teams. Yeah, and, and again, Marist has never made the NCAA tournament. Shout out Poughkeepsie. The Bronx of Ryder. No, I just, to me, Quinnipiac and Fairfield, there's they your... They both have the double buy, right? Or the, the single buy. Single buy. You know, for, and again, you look at the teams are playing in the second round. They're not losing that game. Now, you want to tell me, I think your play here would be, you bet Quinnipiac, you bet Fairfield, plus 350, plus 300. You're going to walk away up a unit no matter what takes place. The team that fucks you would be St. Peter's. The fact that they are priced the way they are, because I'm looking at the bracket. Thanks again to Evan for printing these. The only team, so one through three get buys in this conference. Correct. So St. Peter's has to play an extra game, yet they're better odds than Marist, who has a buy. I think it speaks a little bit to the confidence level that St. Peter's is going to be in this thing. You can do what you want. It's I'm the only other to, one that I would consider. I'm trying to give people a way to play. I'm so The way it's priced. Sometimes yeah. you don't have to know yeah. high-level MEAC or Matt, what is this, MAC basketball to recognize the book is telling you St. Pete – they're legit yeah. here. Conference USA, I actually have a play for you if you want it. It's a team I watched a few times, and I actually don't mind them. Oh, um, can I guess? So I'm looking at the same bracket you are. Yeah. Conference USA, Huntsville, Alabama. You wouldn't pick the favorite, Sam Houston. Correct. You wouldn't go La Tech. Correct. I don't know that you've ever been to Ruston, Louisiana. Is it? Is it the three seed? Mm -hmm. Hilltoppers. Yep. They get up and down. And look, I, I I think there is a major weakness in college basketball right now. Teams can't score. I, look, at can't your, score. look at your school. Uh, do, bro, don't even do it. You were the one trying to tell no, me they were I know. good. Um, now, I, I mean, that. Western Kentucky, I'd love to see plus 500 or more. You'd have to tell me if we can get that. But Western, I've watched them a couple of times, including against Sam Houston. I, they got guard play. They got a left-handed kid uh, just, just jacking up weird-looking shots. I I got good news for you. What? Plus 600 on the Hilltoppers. Yeah, if you want a value play. Yeah. That text the heavy favorite at plus 110. I would never bet that. No. What's Sam Houston? 480. Yeah, they're gross. I think Western Kentucky's interesting. Obviously, you'd have to get through La Tech to do it. But if you do, I've seen them head up against Sam Houston. So, light. Again, guys, guys, these are just... Tiny little kernels of popcorn. I wouldn't go nuts on any of this crap, but if you no. like a bomb pop, plus 600, take a half a unit, turn it into plus 300, go Hilltoppers, go. Okay, what is this? Evan, I, he said he printed all of them. I didn't realize he, he printed all of them. Do you have the, are we on the same page? Just next the one. The Big West. The Big West. No, come on, dude. The Anteaters of UC Irvine. There you go. No, Listen, I, you've heard of them because you filled out brackets before, but let's no, not get carried away. Here's what I do with a conference like the Big West. I usually take the champion very seriously as a 13 seed, a 12 seed, a 14 seed, because there is a bit of pedigree from the conference mm -hmm. to go into the NCAs. And, and in the old days, you'd catch seven or eight or mm -hmm. nine points. You know what you're getting now? Three, Three. or four <laughs> or five. Some of the 12 fives and 13 fours turn into a joke where you're like, wait, four is only laying two and a half to UC Irvine? But I will wait for the tournament for that. Now, the next one. 
Okay, this is one we can actually spend some time on. You need to help me because let me give you my overriding take on the Big Ten. I think this is the single worst Big Ten of my adult life. I mean that with no hyperbole. I'm with you. This Big Ten is absolute hot ass. When you go up and down, right here, right now, how many good teams are in the Big Ten? Good. Produce good while we don't think they're title good. Call they're a good team. Say they're title good. I'll give it to you. I don't want to. Before. How many outside of Purdue? Outside of Purdue? I don't. Go in order. Illinois is the two seed. What do you make of them? I don't. I mean, they're. They have fallen I off know. of a cliff in the last three weeks. Don't get enough stops. That's the issue. You get to this time of year, you're going to need to come up with a couple stops in and out yeah. of a timeout. So, kill momentum. Defensively, they have gone off the wagon, and the Big Ten's a terrible offensively. Which, meaning, if you're not good on defense, well, you're about mean, to get exposed. That means Illinois' ass. Next. Three seed is Nebraska, which... Okay. I know you liked them early in the year, especially I like, at home. I think Hoiberg's an outstanding college coach. Rink Mass, the, the big man who can shoot the three and post it. They got Tominaga. They have some pieces. Now, here's the problem. You get them away from home, it's different. Do I like Nebraska as a pesky team that if they get in, they, can they make a run? Yes. Get out of the opening weekend. Yeah, sure. it's possible. Sure, possible. Okay, so there's... But the Big Ten hasn't done well in the big right, dance to begin with. Call it two. Who else? Okay, uh, four is Northwestern. And they're hurt. I Ty feel like Barry's I was going to say, they're injured. Boo Booey. I like Boo Booey. But in any other Big Ten, they're a six or a seven seed. They're a four seed this year. Who? We'll Don't keep tell going. me Michigan F State. Five is Wisconsin, which, again, a team that looked a lot better about two, three weeks ago. Yeah, they haven't played good ball in a month. No. Um, six is Indiana. They're actually playing better. They need this tournament. They're not even on the bubble yet. Indiana, again, this is not vintage Indiana. They're the first team I'd circle and go, huh. Huh, I'll pull up odds in a second. All right. Huh. Okay. But well, the point is that you got your... the two bigs. You got the transfer kid from Florida. What is it? Renault or whatever his name is. And then right. the, and the where, other. And where gave you guys fits Oh, yeah, you mean a transfer portal player. Yeah, I may, uh, hey, Tom. Yeah, so two bigs there. They would play the winner of whatever corpse Michigan brings to the table in Penn State. Indiana can win that game. Then you're playing Nebraska, who has the double bye. Nebraska away from home doesn't shoot the triple nearly as well as at home. So let's say Indiana won two games and it's the right to play no one I care about. Right. OSU, Iowa, Illinois. I don't ha – now, listen, you'd need to show me plus 2,000. I'm about to. Indiana's plus 4,000. It's right here on my phone on pop. FanDuel. I'm not making this up. The way this tournament is set up, Purdue's plus 100, Illinois's plus 290, everybody else is 1,000 or better. What an awful, awful edition of the Big Ten. Do your Spartans you, are plus 1,400, Mike. They can go fuck themselves. What would their draw be? They get Minnesota first. All, first. first of all, I, when we come back later in the week, I'll tell you, I'm probably betting Minnesota. That's going to be a home game for them. This is in, in Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Michigan State has already lost to this team. Correct. It was We were texting during it. I think that was that ugly. Well, and one right of several now, ugly the games. way that Michigan State is playing, do you realize their only win of recent note that anyone would care about would be what? Outlasting an injured and shorthanded Northwestern Listen, I team? I don't even know how big it is. You're at home. It's senior night. I call it gutty, but... I don't call it gutty. But, I call it but, bullshit. But, but, but take it away. What's the other notable win in the last... None. Right. You lost to Ohio State. All these you losses. lost to Iowa. You lost to Minnesota. You, you, you lost, lost to Assembly Indiana. Hall yesterday. How yeah. about this? MSU's only got one win against anybody in this upper echelon of the Big Ten. It was Illinois. Every other win of theirs in conference is against the bottom five. Right. Well, okay. Quick quick little side, though. MSU, Indiana. I nearly texted you about this. What about it? Do you realize I was MSU— I rooting for Indiana. What? You're rooting for— Well, good for you. I want MSU to lose. Well, okay. I want them out of the tournament. This is a, this is a pro-Indiana opinion. Both these teams are 18 and 13— yeah. Both have four quad one wins, yep. five quad two wins. I'd They're both 10 and 10 in the Big Ten this season. Both of them are mediocre at best, yet MSU's a nine or a 10 seed, according to Lenardi. Which I and think Indiana's bullshit. not even on the bubble. And I know it's the net. I know it's the net. I don't want to hear about the net. But, no, no, no. Take your net and shove but it. But that's my point. What are we doing? I'm Their so resumes are so oh, similar. MSU gets face blasted again. Oh, and, and oh, they went up in the net. I'm like, I'm so tired Thank of hearing you. it. 
There is, you know, I'm going to sound like Jim Costa for a minute, people. <laughs> you play to win the game. Thank you. The whole idea is who you play is only a piece of the equation. How you play has to be the overriding thing. So, yes, if I have a team who played the 200th schedule, I'm going to need them to win 27 or 28 games of to respect them. But with Michigan State, you're talking about a team who is seven, what are they, 18 and 13? 18 and 13. You hadn't, the Baylor game was three months ago. I know, and it was a de facto home game. It was in Michigan, it you was didn't in Detroit. didn't beat anybody else. And, and I know, they're, they're getting credit for losing to Duke in Arizona, and I hate it. I hate Here's it in what college I would tell football. You. I hate MSU it in college. MSU loses to Minnesota, and Indiana wins their first round game in the Big Ten. I'll be the first one telling you I'd put IU in over Michigan State. Oh, perfect. There's no bias with me. I, I'm not you saying accuse there is. me of it. I have tried. Indiana plus 4,000 bomb pop. Don't okay. hate it. And here's the other one. Maybe it's Occam's razor. Just Maybe Purdue. it's the simplest explanation is the truest one. Purdue's the best team. The rest of these teams are poo-poo. And, and, and it's still better than minus 110. Uh, yeah, it's, it's plus 100. And it's not till the tourney that Edie's going to get officiated differently. If he's officiated by Big Ten refs, Big Ten calls, favorite wins. You take the chalk in Purdue, and then if you, you know, your bomb pop, I give you credit. You're taking a six seed, respect. All right. Now to sheet. something that the I'm television sorry. executives have ruined. It is the ghost of what used to be the Big East tournament. Now, I love the fact that we're going to get this thing back to Madison Square Garden, but it's just not the same. The, 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 the teams don't make sense. If you want me to find you one, no, I'm not taking Tricky Ricky. Mm, come on. Look, they're going to be in the garden. They need this game over Seton Hall. I think if St. John's wins it, they're in. If they lose it, they're out. The problem, your reward will be playing UConn. I actually wondered about the bottom and going against some of my bias. I'm not a Tyler Kolick fanboy, but Marquette, I trust a hell of a lot more than Creighton. I think they'll absolutely beat the winner of DePaul and Villanova. Um, I think a rematch with Creighton, I would take Marquette. I would take Marquette laying points. And then you put them in a winner-take-all against UConn. I mean, I, I don't think it's impossible. Now, are you giving me plus 500? As I say, I have the odds in front of me. First of all, you're not considering anybody that's not a one through five seed, right? You're not taking any long shot Butler Xavier. I mean, if Xavier's. the Johnnies were like plus 3,000 or something and Rick was going to wear the white suit, I could throw a nibble on there. Okay, the betting favorites, UConn at minus 150. Wow. Creighton is plus 390. Marquette plus 600. I have to dabble. And then St. John's next at plus 1,300. Yeah, I got to dabble. But hold on. If you think St. John's, they need to beat Seton Hall. They need to beat Seton Hall. It's the game against So UConn. then they're going to get a game against UConn, and you're getting them at plus 1,300 to beat UConn, essentially. Right? right. I know they also have to win one more after that, but that would be, you get what I'm saying? Like, value-wise, if you think they're winning one, they got Patino. Yeah, the problem. It's, it's 1,300 to beat UConn. I'm not saying they win it one of every five times, but at those odds, it might be worth a sprinkle. If you wanted to. I, my issue with St. John's is consistency. They really struggle. Even in the game against Georgetown this weekend, they struggle to hold that lead. And they just, they go through stretches where they don't get stops. Um, hey, they got another one of these lefty gunners. Kid only shoots three pointers. It looks like he's shooting it off of his hip. Um, now Marquette would be the play for okay. me. And you get a player of the year at point guard and Tyler Kolek, and maybe he can guide you in. Good free throw shooting team. But overall, I can't bet UConn minus 150. Do I think they'll win the tourney? Yes. Yeah. Marquette would be the nibble at plus 600. Yeah, I would consider St. John's as a nibble, but yeah. I Here's mean, your best turn. That's about By it. By far and away, the best basketball you're going to see is the Big 12. I love this conference. This makeshift Big 12, the yeah, last year but, with Texas OU. But it's um, it's a goodie. This is a, it's a, it's an oldie, but a goodie here, buddy. Look, you got to start up top. I have to recuse myself because I'm a slap dick. I love Houston. I didn't text you. What they did to Kansas was so delicious. Well, you also like Kansas. I know. I, Kansas, I can't let go of. But You're going to need to. You're going to need to. What do you think the issue is? You think it's they figured out Hunter Dickinson's a dick? <laughs> it probably takes a little bit of time, but yeah. I don't know. They, they were a team we thought was like national title picture. They can't put it together, but if they get and hot, I, I know. don't let them get hot. Let's look at odds. Okay, you can set the scene for the rest of the field for people. But sure. 
I mean, you've got your one seed's Houston, Word which you I, love. I do. Yeah. Jamal Shedd. Your two seed is Iowa State. You like them? I'll give you the numbers here in a second. I don't love them outside of Hilton Coliseum. Not in a tournament setting. Okay. But ba their coach is going to get offers. Otzenberger or whatever his name is. Baylor, the three seed. Any interest? Well, all offense, all gas, no yeah, breaks. I'm out on them. Okay. Well, you liked it with Kentucky. Uh, number four, Texas Tech. Pops on the, Isaacs. Uh, on the seeding. Come on, Pop. We, we bet them a couple times. And then BYU is a team that's faded for us a little bit. They're the five seed. Okay. Kansas, the six seed. Those are the only teams I want to give you odds for. Is there anybody else you'd even consider? No. Okay. Houston's plus 100. Steep if you're going to bet the Cougars. Yeah. you got to win multiple games. Iowa State plus 430. Baylor plus 600. Kansas out of left field plus 1100. BYU 1100. Texas Tech plus 1800. This is so difficult I know. for me. Well, because Houston's likely to win this. Houston's decapitating people. Well, but because, there's no fun in, in, in... No, but again, if it's if it's the Occam's razor, you know, you just... Jim, here's... It, it's a lot like horse racing, is that you'll get people who will pass up a winner in the name of value. <laughs> like, value's only as good as the amount you get to cash in on it. So it's it's one thing for us to be like, guys, here's what I would do. But like, Jim, if you believe Houston who's playing the best defense, yep. who plays with a physicality. They, they really remind me of early stages, Tom Izzo. 98, 99, 2000, 2001. They just drill down on you. Uh, and what they did to Kansas winning by 30, you know, Dickinson shoulder or not. Jim, if you think they're winning the deal, I mean, don't they would, pass up a winner. Now, I mean, I mean, they've won at Baylor. I mean, they, they've gone everywhere they need to. I mean, they... Uh, the book is also suggesting we should consider Kansas, but I, I don't know. Listen, they're a team that I have a hard time letting go of. Kansas is massively talented, but they just haven't put it together. 1,100 to win the tournament. Sprinkle? Houston is a favorite. Kansas is sprinkle if you yeah. haven't given up hope. I, I Yes, I just feel like... I'd rather bet Kansas than Baylor, especially at the, the odds that they are. Look. Wouldn't you? Here's the other issue, right? When you look at the ability to go on the road and win games, these neutral site things, it's very hard to get away from. I mean, for instance, Kansas is terrible away from Fog Allen, three and seven. Mm. BYU, three and seven. Houston's the only team in the Big 12. Outside of TCU, who's six and five. Weirdly on the bubble, though. Houston is seven and three away from home. All right, so there's an element to this where you're like, all right, so can they go to a neutral site and win? I Houston's the only team proven to do it. I love Texas Tech. I got a soft spot for them. But it's like, look, they've got a player that could carry them to a Big 12 title. They do. If Pop Isaacs gets healthy and his backcourt mate, Joe Toussaint, they could do it. They could. What's the price? Am I getting plus 2000 1800 Yeah, I mean, if you have elite guard play, is there a scenario they could get this? To, see, it's all about could. I don't think TCU can do it. No. I don't think BYU can do it. Mm -hmm. Forget about Texas K-State. Kansas has the talent. Baylor Tech's has the, the talent. talent. I don't buy. I, I don't trust him. I'm just saying talent. You're going yeah. upside, could, yeah. swings. I'm not doing Baylor at 6-1 to one when I can get 11-1 to one with Kansas. And the answer is probably Houston at one to one. Well, Double the, your money and just well, bet the Cougars. Well, that was the other thing I was about to say to you. Is look, we're talking. In, in I the could same bet. Thing. I could bet Houston. See, I could. I could take a side of the bracket. I think I might have crumpled it up. You got it. Yeah, I got it right here, buddy. I could take Houston at even money, and then just a bomb pop quarter or half eight, unit nine, Texas tech. tech. Yeah, knowing I'm getting into that title game, and you feel like. You'll take either I one of those. I don't see a world where TCU or Oklahoma beats Houston. Right. They'd have to be drunk, deaf, high, and 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 on the take. Yeah. I would take You're Houston. Getting half the bracket. Houston for two units. Give me the Red Raiders for a quarter unit at plus 1,800, and let's ride. I'll stay on. away from Kansas and save my lumber for the tourney. Later. Yeah. <laughs> I do think there's a possibility. You get out of conference. Teams don't know you as well. 
You can reset. We've seen it with yeah. Michigan State a lot. You get out of that grinder. That's what I would do. We got two more, and they are, well, one of them significant. The other one. What's the non? The non-significant. Oh, the Jersey, Jersey Mike's. Mike's. Yeah. America East. My answer is no. no. Shout out TJ Coppenrath. Just Vermont. bet Vermont and be done with it. Isn't this hosted at Vermont's home gym? Um, Isn't that why they always win this damn thing? It feels that it's way. It's got the huh? big green wall behind the basket, like the pads, like a high school gymnasium. And Vermont's the number one seed. How about that? Uh, you want odds? Yeah, sure. Vermont lay minus 370. They're at home. Can't bet that. All right, move it out of the way. Let's Not go ACC. That. All right, ACC. Now, this is fun. Did you watch Duke, North Carolina? Yes. I was dialed into and that And I game. just want to say once again, the courage of Kyle Filipowski <laughs> to recover from that uh, awful career-ending injury <laughs> to be able to trip somebody. What is, well, it, with Duke, what is it with Duke players being scumbags? Seriously. Channeling the ghost of Grayson Allen and uh, so many others before him. How impressive was North Carolina? Really impressive. That's... And from the jump in Cameron, we had just talked about how they were both decent bets to win the national title at over 2,000, plus 2,000. Now, I need a North favor. Carolina was a better team. I need a favor. You cannot get on these airwaves and suggest Virginia. No. Okay. And I don't want to hear about Pitt. No. Okay. So if you're picking a bomb pop, we don't believe in the three or the four, four seed. Yes. So now we can go a little deeper. You Who can, would it be? So without even looking at the odds, I thought two teams jumped out. Okay. Wake needs it. Needs to go on a little bit of a run. And Clemson has been a team that I, I haven't taken, and this is on me, haven't taken them seriously enough this year. But every time I end up betting a game that they're involved with, they end up surprising me. So Clemson. So I'm looking at the five seed Wake. Or uh, what's Clemson? Clemson's the sixth seed. Okay, so the next bracket down. Do you have any thoughts on either? Like for Clemson, you're just you're a win away from Virginia. Yeah. And then you're a win away. I mean, come on. You can build the case. That you can. And look, Gerard, the Syracuse transfer, is in like year 12. Yeah, he the killed shooting. North Carolina when I watched that game. P.J. Hall's averaging nearly 20 a game. I, I like where your head is at because of pathway. Yeah, both those would go through the three and the four what seeds. What are the odds? I need odds. Uh, Clemson's got to be plus 3,000 if you want me to really? take it seriously. Okay. Dude, you have to make your way through Duke and UNC. Well, everybody will. So Duke and UNC are both plus 180 apiece. You could pick one and then look to the rest of the field for your bomb pop. I would take North Carolina. I would too. You know, we were concerned, R.J. Davis and not a lot of help. Who's that, that freshman guard? He hit the crazy shot. Yeah, but I mean, Bay Baycott, Baycott and, 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 has taken this And their wings. Ingram looks really good right now. Yeah. I mean, Duke, there's a case that they're like three deep at the guard position and they got Filipowski, but we just watched. North Carolina won. So, yeah, it'd be UNC at plus 180 between the two. Wake Forest is 750. Clemson's 950. They have better odds than Pitt or Virginia to win the whole thing. They do. So I, the book's on to us. I really wanted a bomb price on Clemson. Well, you want a bomb? How about VTech? Nope. What is Seth Greenberg back there? Plus no. 3,300. Syracuse plus five grand. What's NC Wake? State is 6,000. Uh, Wake is 750. Can't do you know, it. No, Mike, this is weird how it's priced out, where the five and the six seeds have a better chance to win it yeah. than the three and the four seeds. <sighs> Give me Clemson and North Carolina. I could take UNC plus 180 on the top half. and then Clemson just on for a bottom. nibble on yeah, the bottom. That's what I'll I be do. rooting for them no that's matter who they do. play in that side of the bracket. Vermont, your whole account. I'm kidding. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do, guys. My goal is every day this week, I'm going to try to get in and give you daily dimes. Yep. Just because we don't have futures on everything doesn't mean we're not interested we're in still the watching. individual plays. Yeah. So lock in on it. We'll be with you all week. We are doing... A Selection Sunday instant reaction pod live from the house. We will, Jim, I'll, I'll, I'll have dinner taken care of. You come over. I'm excited. We will have microphones and we will watch and record, watch and record, watch and record. Evan will get it out on Sunday night. That evening. Then. You wake up Monday, you watch it. Then by Tuesday, we will have all our picks for round one. Yeah, we're going to do a quick turnaround here. Then, but wait, there's more. Then, Jim here and me in Vegas, we will do a Friday, day one recap, day two discussion, early Saturday look ahead yeah, lines, kind the of whole a bit. Rallying the troops on that so Friday. We've You'll got 
tons of stuff for you coming up with the tourney. We will have you covered. And what we're doing is a part of our March Madness series. We will talk through every single game. It will have its own capsule. And there will be a lean on every game. Mm -hmm. There will be a pick on most games. Yep. Okay? So it will be our intent, whether it's a side or a total, to give you a direction to go on every MF game in the first round of March Madness. Okay? I cannot wait. Do we have time for a mailbag? We always, I, I love the mailbag. Okay. Yeah, I'm down. What okay. do you got? I got a handful. And guys, cash the ticket podcast at gmail.com. Send these in. Some good ones. Let me just give you a, a primer. Some of the subject. Mike's origin story. Costa's swinger cruise. Unrootable. Bad beat of the year. These are some of the subjects for, for the, the okay, mailbag here. let's go. Let's start with Mike origin story. Guys, love the pod. This is from Joe in Northville. Love the pod. Mike mentioned something I've been wondering about when he was talking about being an Islanders fan. How does a kid from upstate New York end up being a Michigan State fan? I'm happy Mike decided to put his career here in Detroit, but how did it start? I always assumed that Mike became a fan after going to MSU, but not before. Would love the story. Sure. Um... No one in my family had ever gone to college, so I had no outside influences of who I was supposed to like. Everybody in my upstate New York, the neighborhood, believe it or not, Notre Dame's one of the biggest teams. A lot of Irish and Italian Catholics. Ah. Well, there you go. You also have to go back where not every team was on TV all the time. The other popular schools, Michigan was very popular. Penn State was very popular. Why? Regional, and that's what you saw from the Big Ten. Um, it was the starter jacket era, so logos were very important. So <laughs> once I got a look at Gruff Sparty, and once you would always see Michigan State against these big schools, and they would find really horrible ways to lose. I mean horrible. The shoulder pad game against Notre Dame being one. The clock running out with Bobby Ingram, Penn State, Spartan Stadium, number two. Um, lots of games. I just never liked going with the crowd on stuff, and I just took a liking to this logo and this team, and then the starter jacket happened. So that was the East Bay catalog zenith, and I remember, you know, I took my, my money at age like 12 or 13, whatever it was, and I shoveled and I raked lawns and I put it all together so I could get a, a pullover puff coat, and I got the Michigan State one. And I mean, it was the coolest logo in the world, man. Because back then you had the Miami Sebastian, the bird. Yeah, with the duck. The North Carolina, they actually the used Ram. the tar. Right. Mm -hmm. So it just started from there. And then by the time, I don't know, I think I was a freshman or sophomore in high school. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. I didn't have any guidance. So I looked up journalism schools. Oops. Mm -hmm. MSU had one of the top 10. And I'm like, well... I don't really want to stay around here for school. My parents said, look, it doesn't matter where you go. You're paying for it. Oh, by the way. <laughs> and it just kind of went from there. And then, honestly, I, I drove out to East Lansing and saw it after seeing Boston College and Boston University and Fordham and Syracuse. It's just nothing compared to it. And that was it. I was done. I'm like, all right, that's where I want to go. It is a beautiful campus. It's unbelievable. Like, I don't know what time of year you went. Spring. Spring? Okay. Yeah, yeah, spring, fall, right when the, sea, the seasons change. We drove back from my visit to Michigan State, and I believe it was Islanders Sabres at Marine Midland Arena, or the Odd, in Buffalo. And as we're driving back, um, my dad was like, he knew. I mean, I, 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 so we went, we got dirt cheap seats. That was the Miroslav Shatan era, oh, the yeah. Dominic Hasek era. So that era. would have been when they were wearing the, uh, the, 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 the Buffalo black with the, on, yeah, with the yeah. red. Yep. So, yeah, no, that, that's really the long and short of it. And then once you're there, you're, you're there. Like, it's over. I mean, you got to be a total loser. Like, these kids who go to schools, but they're not fans of the schools, mm. losers. Losers. Immerse yourself. It's like a cool experience right. to go to college somewhere. Don't be a dick. Be a fan. Yeah. Next. Costa Swinger Cruise. This I'm not as comfortable answering. Kevin sends the email. Can Mike address the rumors that Costa was on a swingers cruise? Also, can we get a one-off episode with Mike and Roberto where they discuss the downfall of the Howard Stern show? I hear Mike dropping references to the king of all media, 
but I need to hear his take on current Stern buy for now. I can't offer the current because I gave up four years ago. I don't like the show. I don't like what it's become. And I'm not interested in hearing from Neil Patrick Harris for the fourth time in a six month span. So I'm out. Uh, I couldn't tell you. Is he the greatest to ever do it? Yes. Is he someone who influenced what I thought about radio when I was younger? 100%. He's the king. But I don't understand why he's not on a beach right now enjoying his life. Because the show, it ain't for me no more. Now, And what, it's almost, well, we'll get to the cruise here in yes. a second. It's almost too, like we do this with athletes. You get to a point where you passed your prime. Do you really want to keep going? Because that's going to be people's lasting impressions yeah. of you. Like for people who didn't grow up with Stern, who are now consuming, like it's almost, it's, it's, it's not even the same thing. Right. It's night and day. Uh, I would like to say on behalf of James Anthony Costa, uh, as well as his wife, I want to categorically deny any allegation or assertion that Jim Costa and his wife were on a swingers cruise. No, what happened? And while I cannot confirm or deny whether Jim and his wife are in fact swingers, stop! I <laughs> you dick. <laughs> no, I. I where did so, this so come backstory. from? So about it would have been. So for my thirtieth birthday, yes. we took a cruise, and we didn't want to be on a cruise with children. You can relate to this. Hundred percent. You don't want to be stuck on a barge with kids in the buffet. <laughs> Mommy, daddy, mommy, mommy. I'm on vacation. Okay. I don't want to deal with your children. There so are like adult inclusive resorts. This was yeah. adult cruise ship. But when I told the story to our midday show a year ago, the guy looks at me and Gator and goes, oh, one of those cruises. I go, no, 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 it's not one of those cruises. So I told the story are the other day. Are there those cruises? I'm sure they exist. And really? I'm sure people go on that ship and do that. That wasn't for wow. us. But it came up the other day in the morning show. And everybody's losing it. Oh, you went on one upside down pineapples and that whole thing. No, it was just a nice cruise to go on without kids. You are no kids guy. Yeah, no, I, I you, hate kids. have you ever done a cruise? No, I don't want to be on a boat. Why not? I don't want to be trapped. Are you and like I, you get motion sickness? No, or? I don't want to be told what to do. Because they make the little they make little patches and no, little no, no, it, it's, like I you're not gonna get like sick. I don't want to be they, told. they stop in different spots. Yeah, and, and then I got then I'm told when I need to be back or uh, I get left behind. There's more than enough going on on the ship. It's why I don't go places you can't explore. <laughs> I don't want to be a prisoner on my vacation. I it was the first one I'd ever gone on, so I didn't know if I'd like him either. I would do it again. Which part? The swinging or the boat? <laughs> Jim, it's absurd. The boat. You are one of the most conservative <laughs> gentlemen I have ever, not in a political sense, right. but just in a way you live your life. Yeah. I would be stunned if there were a dark side of Costa where you were doing a bunch of wife swapping. Uh, no. That'd be a stunner. Not, not for me. We not would need for to us. put that on like Phil Donahue or something. No. It'd be incredible. <laughs> Sally Jesse Raphael. My so husband's a swinger. <laughs> No, this is what people took out of you going on an adults only. Well, course. yeah, because adults only. And I, then I started clarifying. I said, no kids, because that's a better way to present it. Yeah. Adults only carries a certain salacious. I didn't a realize kids, that. A kids free cruise sounds a lot better. I've always wanted to do kids free planes. Oh, could you? I wish there was one flight a day to the major destinations, and it's a no kids flight. I don't understand what these people are right, fucking they, doing. You they can charge kid. a little extra. No, but your kid's an infant. You're throwing them on a five-hour flight to Mexico. Well, big surprise. They're crying the whole way. Well, here's an idea. You had the kid. You know what my parents did, didn't do when they had their children? They didn't travel. I don't get it. How you old is How old say you can travel with the kid? When they can behave themselves I think is the, the child answer, right? I think the at least three or four years old. At least. Enough to behave themselves. Yeah. And, oh, well, you... Dude, that's your problem, not mine. No, no, no. You hatched the fucking space alien, not me. Space alien. It's ridiculous. Well, let's face it. Most babies are ugly. No one wants to say it. But you have to. You most have to say they're ugly? Most babies are actually unsightly. No, no, but most people won't say it. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm saying it. Okay. I mean, and I agree with you. But my, my whole point is, what would be wrong with an adults-only flight? Again, you wouldn't run them... Often, but no, like you, you put a logo a day, on there way. that's just got a baby's head with like the line through it, and that's how you know it's a kid. Yeah, but it's see, a as soon kid as you, free flight, as soon as you call them adults only flights, and they become mile high flights, takes a whole different no, kind of Well, that's I've experienced with the cruise thing. You can't nah, kids nah, nah, free. Nah, nah. You brand it kids free. Kids only. Charge a little more. Stock up the cooler with more booze. And I just don't get it. Listen, no one's saying you can't take your kid to go see your your dead mother no. or something and go to the funeral. But, like, why are you taking your kid to Vegas? Bullshit. You're selfish. You're an asshole. You want to have the kid and have your life. That's not how it works. Sorry. Siri, play drunk on a plane. Right, uh, all right. Something. Ne next. Cash oh, you just triggered my phone. All right. Sorry. Uh, Cash ticket podcast at gmail.com. This one says bad beat of the year. It's from Chris. 
And this is recent. He goes, love the show. Listen all the time. He goes, I grew up on the east side of the state. I stream you guys from the west side of the state. I have my submission for bad beat of the year. He presents a parlay, only four legs. He didn't do anything irresponsible. And he missed one leg on the parlay. It was the over in the Kentucky-Tennessee game. He missed it by one point. Mike, you may remember, Dillingham had the opportunity at the end of the game, 10 seconds to go, two free throws, Mm -hmm. doinked the front end. Chris says he's absolutely sick. Yeah, you mean like Reed Shepard did to me the night they were up nine against Arkansas with like eight seconds to go and didn't cover five and a half? Yeah, I know. There, you know what? I want U.S. integrity on Kentucky's uh, games. <laughs> That's what I want. Stop worrying about Temple. Mike, Mike, and none of these are like irresponsible bets. It's more like what your dad bets. He had a lot of favorites. The one bold move he took was a total. Everything else was minus 220, minus Free 320. Throw minus throw college basketball oh. is a nightmare. Unrootable reads the next one from Glenn. Love the unrootable topic. 50 years living and dying with the Lions. I watched every second of the 0-16 season. I'm one of those idiots that wants them to win at the end of a losing season. Uh, You don't want to do that. I hate you. Uh, It says, when I watch, draft picks be damned. Through all of it, though, I've never rooted for my Lions to lose until one man, Matt Patricia. Yeah. By the middle of his second season, I hated that man so much it overrode my undying love for the Lions and I actually actively rooted for my team to lose. That's currently happening with me with Michigan State basketball. He said, I couldn't stand to see that fucking smug, useless, arrogant (laughs) POS be happy. The only thing worse than sucking at your job is to be so self-conceited that you don't realize it. Sorry that was kind of long. Love the podcast. Don't be sorry at all, because we've all been there. And I love it. And I think there are. There are certain people in sports you can't root for. You got to separate it. Like right here, right now, how could you as a Piston fan want them to win? Forget about the draft stuff. Troy Weaver should be fired effective immediately. Well, for performance, not even for what happened. But then you're out here saying you're lucky I don't beat your fucking ass to a fan. Here's an idea, Troy. You're awful at your job. You're an AAU coach who's now somehow a GM. You've had one of the worst four-year runs in league history. For a time, you flirted with the worst record in league history. Kindly leave. See, I can't root for Troy. Well, and everybody's I, like, well, well, the fan had to. We have no account of the fan saying fan anything on Savory. You suck at your job. Yeah. The hell's the. I mean, what are we doing here? And there's, oh, he did it twice or three times. Okay, if he's a jackass, he's a jackass. The GM can't say, you're lucky I don't beat your ass. Here's the other thing. Because if a fan should... said that, he'd get thrown out. Correct. So throw the GM out, too. Well, the G, here's the other thing. You're 10 and 53 now, right? Yep. What are you doing sitting with the fans, 10 and 53? You should be in a bomb shelter. You didn't think people were going to say mean things oh, to you? Okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Carry on. Anyway, two more, and then you got to go do your show. Oh, yeah. This one is from. Raymond, he says, horse players review. An incredible watch. Nothing more satisfying than seeing Christian Helmer swing and miss in the finale. I was hoping that one of the cast members would win, so it's a little anticlimactic at the end. He said, however, the show caused me to try and bet on a long shot on some random horse, and I won. Do I need to call the number? Nope. You need to go even further into the vortex. He said, P.S., with the overnight news that Russell Wilson is going to the Steelers, it proves that God himself roots for radio. That's truth, and I'll get to that at two. Also, I, I think I have a weekend where if if we're going to do the Jim Costa immersion in horse race. What's the weekend? Might be Florida Derby weekend. I don't I don't think I'm going back down there for the Florida Derby. Might okay. be the weekend of March 30th. We can huge, make that happen. That's before Final Four. Huge Derby prep. Huge weekend. Um... Yeah, I think that might be the weekend you go full degenerate. Perfect. It's going to be exciting. I, I can't wait to see your rise and fall all in the same afternoon. That's what horse racing is. Woo! William and Auburn Hills with the last one. Tournament pool. Fire up, guys. Fire up, Jim. Good afternoon, guys. I've enjoyed listening to you and Jansen on the Odyssey app. Keep up the good work. He goes, um, I have a question about March Madness pools. I want to do a pool, but I hate brackets. I mm-hmm. want to get your opinions on a different kind of pool. Would you recommend a snake draft where everyone gets a handful of teams? How do you score the pool? Players get points for selecting teams in the final four, the champion. What about Sweet 16? How would you guys go about doing it? I've always wanted to do an auction. Oh, that could be fun. You yeah. prefer, just side note, you prefer fantasy drafts that are auction over yeah, snakes. But so I'm it's the same thing. Take March Madness. Yeah. Everybody's got a draft, call it eight 100 bucks. Sure. And you have a salary cap. Yep. And you got a bid for the teams. All the money goes in, winner take all. Yep. That's what I'd like. So to how do you win, to his point? You win the, the goddamn third. Well, you tear. You just pick the champion? That's it. 
No points for like you get three of the final four teams. Oh, you could you can go points. Yeah, you, you could, could go, do. Yeah, so that's what he's asking. I'm so that's saying what I'm just You just take the win. I think it'd be fun. How bad? Because think about you know, how much of your cap you got to yes, spend. See? That's the game. You go. I love Houston. Are you willing to spend half the money? Three quarters of the money? That's what I'm saying. You got to leave a couple bucks left to, right. to, to round out the roster. That's what I'm saying. It'd be fun. You can go that route. I, we I could do it. it. We could do it without putting numbers out there. The two of us on the pod. We could pick. Uh, yeah, but there's got to be money. We put like a salary cap. We well, we're, we're gonna. We don't talk our personal money. No, but we're we gonna. Could do, we're gonna put like with actual money. money. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm sorry, but like, I, I'm not no, playing. Not for, I'm not playing for hugs. No, 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 I mean, no, 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 no. What the hell are we doing? We could talk numbers, but just yeah. have a salary for everybody yeah, to work I'm, on. I, I think it'd be a blast. Get Evan involved. A hundred percent. I'd have fun with it. Okay. Yes. Let's do that. All right. Tremendous episode. Perfect. Listen, guys, this is just a, a whore's divorce, as Jim likes to say, or as an adult says, an hors d'oeuvre. I don't say that. I. And this is going to be a massive two-week run of content. Be subscribed, notifications on, and we are going to have picks every day. We're going to have live pod. We're going to have every game of this tournament. Just kick back, relax, enjoy it, and away we go. It's cash the ticket.